In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this adorable little apple cozy. It's made out of fleece and felt, and it has yarn that's been gathered at the top and tied in the back. Of course, you can see that there are many different variations to this, so you can be as creative as you want in creating a unique apple cozy for yourself. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to create the one with a worm on it. So let's get started. In order to complete this project, we're going to need the following items. You're going to need a bit of fleece for the apple cozy, and you probably need about um, a square foot in size. You're going to need some felt or some extra fleece in order to do your design. Make sure it's a contrasting color so it shows up nicely. I have a hole puncher here, and the punch, if you look at it, is smaller than a normal hole punch. I think this is about 1 16th in size. I got it from the scrapbooking section of the craft store. You need some yarn and you also need a needle to, that's big enough to fit your yarn. And this one I think is a yarn darner needle and, or you can use the, the child's needle as well. Those are a little bit bigger and easier to get the yarn through. We need some scissors, our pattern, which you can find on the website, an apple of course, right over here, some embroidery floss in order to sew on our design, a fabric marker, and then we need pins and needles. So that's about all you need in order to get started on this project. So let's move on and we'll start by cutting out our apple cozy. I have my pattern here with my apple and I'm using just a medium sized apple. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna take my pattern, put my apple in the center, and then wrap my pattern around the apple just to make sure that the top of the apple just peeks out a little bit so the pattern isn't totally engulfing the apple and it's not too far down on the apple either. It just kind of just peeks out of the top. Now if your apple is larger, all you have to do is just make the circle slightly bigger and if it's a smaller apple, you just make it a little bit smaller. So now that that works out perfectly, I'm gonna take my apple away. I'm gonna fold my pattern in half so I have half a circle and bring my fleece over here. And I'm putting the fold of my pattern on the fold of my fabric. I just folded my fabric in half. And this is just gonna save me on a little bit of cutting time. So I'll have to cut out half a circle as opposed to a full circle. And I'm gonna just pin my pattern and then cut it out. And then after that, we're ready to move on to the next step, which we're gonna work on the applique of our apple cozy. So now I'm going to cut out my applique out of my felt and I'm making a worm to be put onto my apple. And you want to make sure your design is not too big. So once you have your pattern, you can go ahead and pin it or I'm just going to use my fabric marker and draw an outline around it. And usually the simple patterns is what works the best that I found. So once I have my outline, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and we're gonna figure out where we're gonna put it on our fleece part of the cozy. The next step is we need to figure out where would be a safe place in order to sew our applique onto our cozy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap up my apple with my cozy like I did with the pattern just want to make sure you have a smooth area like that. Use my fabric marker and I'm going to mark not at the top because we need to make sure we leave, I would say at least three quarters of an inch in order to weave our yarn through the top of it. So I'm going to say that's the top. And then the bottom, I'm going to say right about there. We want to make sure it's not too low because once the apple sets down, if your design is too low, it's not going to show. So not, now that I have that mark, I'm going to take my apple away again, flip over my cozy, and take my little worm here, and I'm going to fit him right in that area. Now, of course, if you are doing a design around the whole apple, you're going to want to make these marks around the whole thing, just so you can make sure that you do it right. So I'm just going to make sure he's straight, and I'm going to pin him, and now we're going to sew him on the cozy. I'm going to sew my applique onto my cozy using embroidery floss. Embroidery floss comes with six threads that are 
a single strand and I'm just gonna separate it so I only have three threads attached here. And I've already put it onto my sewing needle and there's a knot on the end of it. And basically what I'm gonna do is a running stitch. I'm gonna take my needle behind the cozy here and come up through my design. Pull it through and then I'm gonna go back down I'm gonna say probably about an eighth of an inch. Once I go through, I'm gonna come back up. And I'm not gonna come up directly next to the stitch I just did. I'm gonna come a little ways away so there's a gap in between my stitches. And then I'm gonna go back down. So this is called a running stitch. And basically you're just going up and down through your layers here and I'm just following the outline of my applique. And if you wanted to make this project kid friendly, so kids can also participate in it, instead of sewing, if they're a little young and you don't want them handling a needle and thread, you can also do this with some fabric glue. That works pretty well and they can just glue their design and then they can make an apple cozy for themselves. Kind of a fun way to take an apple in your school lunch. So as you can see, I'm going to do this sing single stitch right here and then show you. There's a gap in between each of these stitches here. And you don't want to need to make your stitches very big. So I'm going to go ahead and finish going around my whole applique. And uh, I'm going to do an eye for my worm here. And I will show you how to do a French knot so you can have a nice neat little eyeball. I'm going to show you how to create a French knot, which is an embroidery stitch used to make knots in your designs. And I'm going to use one for making the eye of my worm here. So you're going to bring your needle up through your fabric right where you want your French knot to be. You're going to pull your thread to the left like this. And then you're going to bring your needle over to the right. So the sharpest point of the needle is now facing right where your thread came out. You're going to take your thread, you're going to wrap it around your needle three times. So one, two, three. I'm going to hold this with my finger. And then I'm going to try to keep your thread tight and bring it through your fabric again, right near where you came out before. And uh, once I get it close, I'm going to put my thumb right over this area. And I'm going to start pulling it through. And this is just to make sure that your thread goes in in a nice orderly manner without creating a knot before you're ready. And then you're just gonna pull it through just like that. And then you just knot the back and you have your French knot. I'm now gonna use my hole puncher. And remember, this is the smaller hole puncher. So it's about 1 16th of an inch, it's really tiny. And the reason is, uh, it's kind of a trick that I learned because I have a lot of trouble getting my needle and the yarn through the fleece. Um, so what I do is I punch some holes in the area that I'm going to be weaving my yarn through. And you're going to want these holes about 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge and about 3 eighths to a half an inch away from each other. So I'm not really marking it. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I guess you can mark it if you really want to be precise, but I don't really need to be that precise. So I'm just going to punch through. And it doesn't really produce any fabric holes coming off. It just kind of just punches through it. And I'm just going to go all the way around my cozy. And this will make it really easy for us to sew our yarn through our cozy. I now I'm going to thread my yarn onto my yarn darner here. And even though I have a pretty big eye on my needle, it's still really hard to get my yarn through it. So I'm going to teach you a trick that I use to get it on there. So I'm using about a yard and a half of yarn. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a loop. I'm going to take my eye of the needle. I'm going to put it through my loop. I'm going to put my finger here. And then I'm going to pinch it right where the yarn meets the needle, so right here at the top, and I'm going to slip my needle out. But I still have my yarn pinched between my fingers, and you could just barely see the top of it right there. I'm now going to take the eye of my needle, and I'm going to 
push it into that area and you're gonna see a little bit it's gonna pop out through that needle and this is where it really comes in handy to have fingernails and then you're gonna grab it and you're gonna pull it and sometimes it's a little bit of a, a struggle here but I'm very determined so now I'm just gonna pull this little part here through it it's a little twisted so I'm gonna get past the twisted part and there we go now it's on. I'm now gonna weave my yarn through my cozy edge here where we had the holes punched before. I have my cozy right side facing up so I can see the applique and I'm gonna start at the opposite end of where the applique is. And we're gonna do the runny stitch going around the cozy again, but this time, instead of coming up through the fabric, I'm gonna start my stitch by going down. And I'm not gonna pull my yarn all the way through. I want to leave a little bit hanging because I need something to pull when I get to the end here. And now I'm going to come up through the next hole. And see how easy this goes through because I already have my holes so much easier. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to go all the way around the cozy. And I wouldn't pull it too tight. Um, we don't really need to start gathering it till we have our apple in the center of it, which I like to wait until the end. So I'm going to go back down through and you can see it's just like the running stitch we did for our applique. There's a gap in between the stitches. Now I'm down so I'm going to come back up through my hole and I'm going to do this all the way around. I finished going around my cozy with the yarn this is the right side, this is the wrong side of the cozy, and I'm just going to flip this up. So I wanted to make sure that the ends of my yarn are both on the same side. This is so after I pull it, I can then tie it on a, in a bow. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to pull my yarn here so that my cozy starts to gather around my apple. My apple's a little crooked here, so it's a little bit more difficult to do. but. I'll have to just do a little adjustment. There we go. And then once I get it around there, I'm going to tie it into a bow. And at this point, you could probably cut the excess yarn that's hanging off so it can be as long as you want. So now that I have my bow here, I'm going to adjust my gather so they're more evenly distributed around my apple and I'm going to cut the end of my yarn and at the end of my yarn I'm just going to tie a knot. This is so when we undo the cozy hopefully the yarn won't go back through the holes they'll just stop at the last one so it won't come undone. Alright so there we go and I'm just going to turn this around and there's our little apple cozy with our worm. And I still have my fabric marker, but this should disappear after a few hours. And there you go.